Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back. We're doing something a little bit different today because some big news dropped. News that I have been waiting for for a very, 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 very long time. Disney is finally releasing their annual passes. We are finally going to be able to buy annual passes for Disney that is not just the, the lowest tier of annual passes, the Pixie Dust Pass, where you can only go on the weekdays, but their whole thing of annual passes are now going to be available. A lot of, lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings about Disney at the moment, um, so I thought maybe we could just kind of sit down and sort of do a chat, do a little Disney chat here. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and go over the different annual passes that they have available and or they will have available and um, I'm going to kind of explain my thought process on it all as to which one I'm thinking about getting. For a lot of you out there who may be new to the channel, um, Disney has been a huge, ginormous part of my life uh, since the very, 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 very beginning. Uh, my family has been going to Disney even before I was born. We moved down here to Florida when I was two years old from Canada and um, my mom got a job at Disney and um, so we went to Disney all the time. I also like the only job that I ever like really truly wanted and knew that I wanted was to work at Disney uh, which I did do eventually. So um, the, I'm, I'm kind of saying all of this because I want to just like set it up here for you that I am a Disney fan specifically a Disney Parks fan. If you have been following the channel, um, or if you know, or if you've seen, uh, we just had a not so great experience with Disney. Um, also, if you follow me on the social medias, you know that I am not afraid of being vocal uh, about Disney and the stupid things that they do. Because trust me, they do a lot of stupid things, um, in my opinion. Um, and so this could be very confusing and maybe even hypocritical for a lot of people for me to, in the video literally right before this, we were trying to get on Tron and spoiler alert, we didn't. And, um, I just went off on several diatribes in that video about how crap the virtual system process is and how... You know, I'm not very happy with Disney right now. It's complicated. It's very complicated. I liken it to um, when you have a very complicated family member that you just, you don't agree with, you butt heads with, uh, you wish they'd do better, you just wish that they would do better, make better decisions. Um, maybe you don't agree with them politically or religiously or whatever, whatever it may be. You just have issues with that family member and yet you have so many good memories and wonderful times with them and they're your blood. They're, you know, they're the, you're, they're your family. Um, it's kind of the same thing on a weird level and, um, I think that's what a lot of maybe I don't know like th this is just my ex I can only speak for myself um but I do think there's a lot of people out there who feel kind of the same way is like it's very difficult for me to just be like all right well goodbye Disney I will see you later I'm never ever gonna go to your parks again or support you or whatever whatever it's done and over with um, kudos to you if you can because I do truly believe that the best way, you know, is to not give them money and or the time of day, obviously. Even though they, they make me mad to the ends of the earth and I think that a lot of the things that they do are, are awful, um, it's still my happy place and I'm still passionate about it and I still want to go flat out. I, I just still want to go. I hope that you all understand that. Um, I really do. As much as Jay and I obviously really wanted to get him on that ride, um, I think it kind of ended up being a good thing that we didn't get on the ride because it shows a different side of the Disney process of it all. I think a lot of people 
are very used to seeing people get on the ride, get on the ride, get the ride footage, get, you know, get the whole experience, do all that stuff. We very rarely see on the YouTubes and TikToks and social media when people fail. Um, and I think that that's a shame. I think that we need to show the actual real side of Disney, what a realistic Disney vacation and experience actually looks like including the fails. I don't ever want to be the person that's like, my entire life is absolutely perfect. Nothing wrong ever happens to me. Every single trip to a theme park is the best day of my life. This is the best food I've ever eaten. This is the best weather in the world, etc., etc., etc. Um, because that's not the truth. That's not what vacations actually are. That's not, that's just not what it is. And I'm not interested in selling you something that isn't real. Um, I'm interested in showing you things as realistically as possible. We always keep it positive on the channel um, and light and fun, but there are things that I still want to show you and present to you um, that is real. So if I can do that and, um, you know, if I can go to Disney and I can show you every aspect of Disney, the good, the bad, and the ugly, I think that might actually be more beneficial than me just flat out saying, I've, I washed my hands of it and I'm walking it away and I'm just never ever going to show Disney on my channel. Um, I think that there's a bunch of different schools of thought on this, on the best way to sort of tackle this thing, but I've kind of come to terms with, I think that's the best way for me to accurately, uh, to do something about it, quote unquote. Do I really think that I'm gonna inspire any change around Disney? Not really, I don't really think Disney gives a crap. But let's face it, Disney is a huge darn company and they're making a lot of money. Whether or not I am contributing to that or not, if I don't, guess what? There's hundreds of thousands of millions of people willing to take my place and give them that money. Um, it's not the right mindset to have. The right mindset to have is I'm the one that can inspire change. I'm the one that can make it happen, you know. But we all kind of have to collectively get to that point. You know what I mean? I hope that this all makes sense. Um... I just think from where we are right now, like, I think the best thing that I could do is to continue to show the most realistic uh, expectations of Disney and showing different, maybe different con uh, content than other people show. Um, and hopefully that will, I don't know, help people decide what vacations they want to take, how they want to spend their money. Um, I think that that, I think that that's best, at least for the time being. Um, so yeah, again, I, I really hope that that makes sense. Um, obviously, yes, there is the selfish part of me that's like, I just want to go to Disney and be in my happy place. Um, even though that's like really been declining <laughs> a lot. Um, but really and truly, like, as far as the content that I want to provide on this channel, I always want to make sure that it's real and, um, and that I can help people. And if this is just another way that I can help people and I can help people more this way than just not talking about it at all, then I, I, I don't know. I think that that's the best thing that I could do. Anyway, let's go ahead and dive into the annual passes now that are gonna be available. There are four, and I have my laptop pulled up here so I can look at this and explain it to you. Um, so there are four different annual passes that they are going to make available. There is the Disney Pixie Dust Pass, which is the one that has, that is currently available now and has been available. Basically can only go during the week. The weekends, Saturday and Sunday, are generally not available. 
um, and it also has block out dates during peak seasons and holidays and all of that good stuff. Also can only make up to three Disney reservations at one time. Get the standard theme park parking and then the discounts and all of that good stuff as well. Pixie Dust Pass is also specifically for Florida residents only. Um, the price of it is $399 plus tax, or you can do a monthly payment program. Um, so it's $19 per month with a 12 monthly with 12 monthly payments and 0% APR after $205 down payment with the Florida resident monthly payment program. Again, this is like the most basic pass. This is the one that's been available for like forever now and um, to be honest I was this close to purchasing it like seriously like today or tomorrow like I was like right there on purchasing it um, because I like I said like I, I kind of well I don't think I really said this yet but kind of want to make more Disney content thankfully I don't I don't have to do that anymore hopefully so anyway that's the Disney pixie dust pass the next tier up is the Disney pirate pass so this one is in total seven hundred forty nine dollars or fifty dollars per month with a 12 monthly with 12 monthly payments and zero percent APR after two after a two hundred five dollar down payment with the monthly payment program. Again, this is just for Florida residents. Still get the block out dates, including mostly during peak seasons and holiday seasons. Which, by the way, we'll talk about the block out dates in a second here. I'm just kind of doing a general overview of this stuff. Um, with the Pirate Pass, you get to make and hold up to four theme park reservations at a time. Um, you get the parking, there's the discounts, and by the way all of the discounts are, it looks like it's the same across the board generally, uh, so up to 20% off select dining and merchandise, which definitely does come in handy. You don't get the, this is just from experience with being with Jay who does have an annual pass, um, you don't, it, it doesn't apply for absolutely everything across the board, uh, but it applies for a lot of things and it, trust me, like every little bit that you can save helps a ton. The next pass up is the Disney Sorcerer Pass and that one is $969. All of this is plus tax, by the way, and it's for the year. Um, or $69 per month with 12 monthly payments, 0% APR after $205 down payment with the Florida Resident Monthly Payment Program. This one is available for both uh, Disney Vacation Club members as well as Florida residents. So evidently if you are not a florida resident um but you do but you are a dvc member then you could apply uh, apply you could buy this annual pass which i think is pretty cool again you get the you know the block out dates um this one you can hold up to five theme park reservations at one time and then yeah the parking the discounts all that good stuff. Other cool thing about the Disney, di, the Disney, the other cool thing about the Disney Sorcerer Pass uh, is that it's available to eligible DVC club members beginning April 13th. So you actually get a head start on this annual pass. Um, and then all other guests beginning April 20th. So I don't know what eligible DVC members mean uh, but if you are one you might want to look into that a little bit if you're interested in an annual pass and then finally the Disney Incredipass a cool $1,399 or $108 per month with the 12 monthly payment program, 0% APR after the $205 down payment for the Florida resident monthly payment program. 
Um, this one has an eligibility for all guests, which I think also is kind of pretty cool. Neat to me when theme parks allow everybody across the board to get an annual pass, whether you are a resident of that state or not. Um, I think that that should be an option at all theme parks, personally. <laughs> especially as a person who moves as much as I do, and it's very hard for me to prove my residency in the States, uh, which will be a whole thing within and of a thing itself for me, but let's do, we'll get into that later. Anyway, it's neat that this is available for anybody, so it looks like even if you're not living in Florida or if you're a DVC member or whatever it is, you could still apply for this pass. Yes, it's the most expensive pass of them all, but at least you have the option. I'm gonna assume that that monthly payment program would not apply to you. You'd probably have to pay it all out as a flat fee. Um, being a non-Florida resident, we'll up to five theme park reservations at one time. Um, this one also has no blockout dates. So all of the other ones do have blockout dates. This one, the Increda Pass, has absolutely no blockout dates, so you are able to go whenever you want. And that is heavily, heavily quotated because one thing that we haven't talked about this entire time, um, before we do though, you it's, it's the same thing. Parking, discounts, all of that good stuff. Um, all of these passes still require uh, a reservation. So no matter what, whatever a annual pass that you have, you still have to make a park reservation to get to wherever you want to go. So depending on many multiple different factors, the days of, and we all know this at this point if you've been following Disney, but the days of getting up in the morning and be like, oh, I feel like going to Disney. Let's just go. Are over. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, you know, it'll come back someday, but um, that that's not a thing. You have to double check and make sure that you could actually get a reservation for the park that you want to go to, um, either in advance or hopefully that the day of, but it de again, depending on the day and multiple different factors, that's not guaranteed. Okay, another cool thing that you could add on to your annual passes as well is um, they have an option uh, to do some add-ons. So there is a water park and sports option. So with uh, an extra $99, an extra $100 plus tax, uh, you can add on um, the water parks and golf courses. So just looking at this right here on the website, for the duration of your annual pass, adding the water park and sports option includes pass holder admission to select Walt Disney World experiences with no blockout dates and also no uh, reservation. There isn't a reservation system for their water, 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 wow. I'm from Pennsylvania, uh, their water parks or <laughs> or um, like their mini golf and like their golf courses and things like that, um, which honestly ain't that bad. Uh, their, their water parks are quite expensive. Um, if you if you're planning on going more than a number of times in a year, I think that that's a hundred percent worth it. Um, also, their uh, golf courses, um, even if you're not a golf person, um, I'm not a golf person, but I love me some mini golf and Disney has some really cool mini golf courses um, that I really like. And they're also kind of more, you know, it's Disney, it's on the more pricey side. So if you wanna do a bit more with your time at Disney than just going to the theme parks, I think that that's a great option. It's probably something that I will consider doing. Also another add-on that you could do that is the Disney Photo Pass download. Um, so capture every magical moment with the unlimited Disney Photo Pass downloads for just $900 plus tax for the year. So you can get everyone in the picture with photo and video opportunities at select attractions, iconic park locations, etc, etc. Um, so you basically just get unlimited um, Disney Photo Pass. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. 
Um, this is something personally I will probably forego, forego because I'm not a huge, this is all personal preference. This is all personal preference right here. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of the photo pass. I like taking my own photos. Uh, it's just not my, it's just not my thing. That's all I'm saying. It's just not my thing and I don't think it's worth it to me to pay a hundred dollars for the photos. So, you know, to each their own. Um, some of you out there are probably like $900 just to do all the water parks and blah, blah, blah. Like that's crazy. But the photo pass sounds awesome. Like whatever it is for you, I'm just presenting you with the options and also telling you what I'm thinking. Also another fun fact here, and this is actually something that I will probably be looking into myself as, um, because I'm in this situation, but if you can if you already have a Disney ticket, like a single park day ticket or three day ticket or whatever the heck you have, basically a ticket that's not an annual pass, um, you can upgrade it to an annual pass. And welcome to my desk everybody. So we're gonna take a look at the blockout dates next. Um, let's go ahead and just go to the Pirate Pass. So this is the second tier one. Go ahead and press on all parks just to kind of get an idea. Um, so the dates with the little X through them are gonna be the blockout dates. So with the Pirate Pass, it looks like we have um, a weekend in, late in May. I'm sure that's a holiday. Um, a few days early in July, that's for the 4th of July, uh, up here in September, probably for Labor Day, a few days in October, a number of days, just about a week here in November, probably for Thanksgiving, and then a number of days, a number of weeks actually, um, just about three weeks almost, the end of December and the beginning of January and then a few more days in January uh, that we will be blocked out. Um, and then a number of weeks in March here in the beginning of April, that's probably for spring break. Uh, so hopefully that kind of gives you an idea. Again, this is the Pirate Pass. Um, so this is the second tier one. Like basically, your major holidays, your three-day weekends, and um, that's about it. And now the Sorcerer Pass, which is the third tier one, you can see, or hopefully you can see, um, there's not a whole lot of blockout days. All of May is available, all of June, all of July, all of August, all of September, all of October, most of November, except for uh, a few days surrounding Thanksgiving and then the same three week period at the end of December and beginning of January for Christmas and New Year's and then all of and then the whole rest of January, the rest of February, the rest of March and the rest of April. So there's not a lot of blockout dates for the Sorcerer Pass. And then the Incredipass has absolutely no blockout dates whatsoever. Um, let's just go to the Pixie Dust Pass here. Pass. I always say past. I don't know why. Pass. Um, again, this one is only for the weekdays. So Saturdays and Sundays are out. And it does look like there's a few days even during the week where it, they don't want you to go like... The 29th here of May, the uh, 4th of September here, that Monday. So a couple of three-day weekends and holidays. Like there's a bunch of holidays here that are blocked out as well. Um, so a lot, this obviously has the most days that you will not be able to go. All of this information is obviously available on the Disney website. I'll just put a link down below for you if you wanna click on it and take a look at it for yourself. Obviously, that's what you should do if you're really thinking about uh, buying an annual pass. Um, so, yeah, but um, as far as, <laughs> As far as the block out dates go, first of all, I'm actually quite impressed, quite impressed. At least 
um, based off of my personal experiences with having an annual pass, which again was like a really, really, really long time ago. So this doesn't really mean anything. It's just, this is just what I think personally. Um, I'm used to like all of June, all of July, all of September, all of December, <laughs> like all of these major times, like the busiest times of Disney being totally blocked out. Um, so the fact that you could actually, th there's really just like a handful of days for all of these passes, except for the Pixie Dust Pass, um, that you can't go is actually quite impressive to me. Um, both the Pirate and the Sorcerer Pass seem pretty comparable in terms of, uh, blockout dates to me. Um, it seems kind of negligible, the difference, um, in terms of just the blockout dates. So, uh, that's something to consider. I think that's the, the biggest thing for me, I guess, are the blockout dates, or at least it's a big, big factor. I'm sure it is for a lot of you as well. Um, just some thoughts, again, on the whole thing, on the whole topic. Um, first of all, you are being blocked out of days that um, any normal sane person would not want to go to a theme park anyway. Uh, they are blocked out for a reason, and the reason is because everyone and their uncle is at the park that day. Um, it's incredibly busy, it's Florida, so it's probably hot, and I, to me, when I was a layman and just going to the parks to have fun, those are the last days that I want to go. This, the blockout dates are really just in theory. Like this is heavily uh, quote quoted because um, there, it's still a reservation system. It's still all based on a reservation system. So even if you wanted to go and you don't have a blockout date, that does not necessarily guarantee that you are getting into that park that day. Case in point, Tron. Um, you know, Jay has an annual pass. I don't have an annual pass. Um, and he has the Incredible Pass, so he doesn't have any blockout dates. Well, we got the news a couple of days late um, after the announcement of the official date of when Tron was going to open and lo and behold all of the reservations were taken up for the Magic Kingdom already um, for that date for April 4th. So we kind of really didn't have a choice in the matter um, and I had to buy us, I had to buy him a ticket to get into the park to be there that day which is absolutely crazy absolutely crazy <laughs> and not fair and st and just really stupid like really just flat out stupid um but that's what we that's what we had to do because that's you know that was important to jay to be there on the opening day and i wanted to make that happen for him so i bought him a ticket on top of his annual pass I, to me i think it might makes sense to not buy the highest tier pass, the Incredit Pass, with no blockout dates because as far as I'm concerned, every day is a question. Every day is a question. And um, I might as well spend less money in the long run on a pass with some blockout dates on, once again, days that I don't want to be in the park um, and then if something happens to come up that I really want to be there for and it's blocked out, um, I, and if it's really something like I gotta be there for, which at this point in time there is absolutely not a single darn thing that that will be, um, again this is all me, all my opinion, um, there's nothing that I'm excited about opening up except for, uh, Tiana's new ride, um, and yeah, like that's it. <laughs> I don't really care about anything else. So if that happens to happen, I will just suck it up and buy a ticket and go on that day. But I really don't think that that's gonna happen. And even if it does, that's gonna be less money in the long run than me shelling out a lot more money every single month to go whenever I want to, when I don't wanna go on those, not on those 
updates anyway. So hopefully that all makes sense. I, I want to give you all some options. I want to give you some thinking outside of the box things that you can do. So you don't have to shell out all of this money just to not even really be guaranteed to go into the park anyway. That's what I'm thinking with all of this. For me, it's probably going to be between the Sorcerer Pass and the Pirate Pass. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do yet. I'm going to think about it a bit more. If proven in our time, and I've seen Jay struggle with this a lot. Uh, struggle with getting reservations on the days that he really wants to go to things. Um, so, I don't, see, I don't see the reason to spend extra money when it's not, it's not guaranteed that I'm going to get inside of that park. There's also a really handy um, comparison page here as well with all four of the different passes that they have, the prices for them both yearly as well as monthly if you're a Florida resident. Um, and it kind of, yeah, just gives you sort of a, a a really 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 basic overview of how they all differ big theme park news today tampa j annual passes will become available once again and congratulations to those including yourself yeah who can finally now again purchase an annual pass yeah uh i got to experience this uh the whole thing because I I retained my pass. I yeah. I remember when they took them away and even some of my friends that were annual pass holders uh, let them go and they said, you know what, a couple months, everything will be back to normal. Everything will be fine. We'll just won't renew it right now because we can't really go because of the situation um, yeah. that happened. This all spawned from, you know, the pandemic, of course. And then they weren't a thing anymore. Yeah. Now everyone again has the opportunity. So this is big news. And yeah. I looked over the tiers. Uh -huh. uh, the pass that I have, the Platinum Pass, that's what I still call it. Because yeah. that's, that's originally what it was, has gone up again. About 200 bucks a month. And as speculated, they always go up. You always do. When I first started in 2018 with my annual pass, I think it was just shy of 900 bucks. Okay. Between 800 and 900. Wow. Now it's twelve hundred, and I think it's thirteen. Yeah, it's going up to thirteen ninety nine. bucks a year. Yeah, yeah. Roughly, so that's like a hundred and ten bucks a month. Um, right now, I'm paying around a hundred, um, hundred and five. So this is big news for those who really just wanted an annual pass with the block out dates, whatnot. And this is great. I'm glad they're stepping in the right direction, and things are slowly coming back yeah everything has gone up in general um to be fair just yeah society not just disney but weeks. like everything yeah so i get it but i hope we get back some of what we originally lost um we we don't have fast pass anymore uh -huh. um we still have to make reservations yep uh i can't park hop yep. uh until two and I really miss those and originally, you know, that was the whole reason why a lot of us, you know, Floridians, Florida pass holders, just really love that pass. Okay, and I think that is pretty much everything that I had to cover. Again, I would really encourage you if you're thinking about getting an annual pass to go online, take a look at it for yourself and uh, just really kind of think about what you want to do. They will be available April the 20th, 2023. Um, although, again, if you're thinking about doing the lower tier, the Pixie Dust Pass, you uh, that's available now, that's been available, so you could purchase that now if you want to. Really excited about this, really, 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 really excited about this. I was already like right on that verge of buying the uh, the Pixie Dust Pass myself. Um, I want, there's so much content that I want to do at Disney. A lot of content that I want to do at Disney. I'm not going to be a Disney blogger. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's a lot of stuff that I want to do there. I have a lot of different ideas of things that I want to show you all and talk to you all about. Um, so I was already going to get an annual pass and then this news came up today and it's like, oh, well, okay, great. I hope that this helped. I hope that this clears things up, um, not just with the annual passes, but just with the channel and kind of my stance on Disney in general. 
Um, again, I hope that this doesn't necessarily come off as hypocritical. I can definitely see how it does. Um, but I think that, you know, we don't, for a lot of things, we don't live in a black and white world. It's not all good and it's not all bad. And um, Disney for me is very much that. It's something that I struggle with, like, on the daily, you know, this this thing that I've grown up with my entire life and that I love is also something that I can't stand anymore. Like, I hate it. Um, so I'm just hoping to channel all of those feelings into the content that, I, that I'm that i going to present to you all and um, hopefully provide a voice for a lot of us out there who are feeling very, very, very frustrated with Disney and are not getting their voices heard on things, you know, and, and to be able to show of a realistic view of what going to Disney is, is really like and um, how to navigate all of that and, and all of that good stuff. So anyway, I'm sure this video is long enough. Appreciate you all watching. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you all very soon. Also, any thoughts, feelings, comments, whatever. I mean, this goes for any video, but Especially for this one, I'd love to hear what you all are thinking about it all. Are you excited about the annual passes becoming available? Um, if you're thinking about getting one, which one are you thinking about getting? Um, I don't know. I, I would love to hear from you any and all feedback. Please leave it down in the comments below. And um, yeah, okay. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.